Hello and welcome to another video. This is the monthly update for the 100k giveaway, which has been making some really, really good progress. The interesting thing about this portfolio, and because it's based around dollar cost averaging, is it's a great educational piece to show you how to continue to invest, whether the market's going up, down, or sideways. And currently the portfolio, there's about $6,300 invested, and it's currently worth around $9,300. And what we're seeing right now at least for the last month or so, is Bitcoin, which the whole market follows, as I've told you before, has just been bouncing within a range of around 40, 41 to almost $50,000. It's been bouncing up and down uh, over the course of about a month. And in that time, we haven't made much progress upwards, but the portfolio has started to, to move up a little bit. But what I wanted to share with you today were well, two things. The, the monthly portfolio, the way that I am continuing to contribute to this is whenever someone supports the channel. So underneath this video, there is a bunch of links on, on different partner programs that we've partnered with, as well as affiliate programs where you can go and purchase different products, and I get a commission for that. Now, every single commission that the channel gets, I put back into this portfolio, and I'm going to be giving it away towards the end of of the bull cycle, which is you know three to six months away. It should be between the end of this year, because we're in the last quarter of 2021, and the first quarter of next year. But in the last month, we haven't had any purchases across any of the affiliate programs, so there's no actual money to put in this month. So hopefully that changes now. Hopefully you guys start supporting the channel. Again, I am putting everything into this portfolio that comes in through this channel. So... Let's uh, let's jump right into it. So the portfolio has been doing pretty well. Uh, it's up around 30%. It's around uh, 0.21 of a BTC. And again, the goal is to get this to 10x by at the end of the cycle. Now, uh, can it 10x? Is it possible? You know, anything is possible. Some of these coins have really, really good value propositions. They have a lot of great backing. And fundamentally, they're really, really good coins. Uh, there's potential for a lot of them to 10x or more in the rest of the cycle, but there's also potential for some of them to either go sideways or pretty much sit where they're at or even go backwards. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on in the marketplace because another month has gone by, there's a lot more sponsorship, there's a lot more negative news, and there's a lot going on you know, on the macro side of things with, you know, the Evergrande situation in China, as well as China's having issues with being able to supply electricity and having to close down a lot of the provinces there. So there's a lot going on in the world. And Bitcoin seems to be just doing what it's doing. It seems to be just moving in that sideways trend. So first and foremost, Let's jump into some news about Crypto.com. So Crypto.com has been going on a sponsorship spree in the last six months or so, sponsoring everything from Formula One to sports teams to uh, individuals to people in the gaming, online gaming world. So they've just sponsored the Philadelphia 76ers, and they're going to be allowing them to use their platform to launch NFTs as well. So they're going to have an official patch on their on their jerseys, as well as they're going to be the 76ers are going to be using the NFT platform from Crypto.com to sell NFTs to the fans. Very, very cool. Talk about dollar cost averaging. Kathy Woods bought the dip. So Ark Invest bought 204,000 Coinbase shares in the last two days, a $48 million investment. And they also bought 727,000 Robinhood shares to the tune of $30 million. And they're continuing to buy Bitcoin as well as uh, other alts like Ethereum in dollar cost averaging type purchases as well. Here's another huge one for another big exchange. So Crypto.com is continuing to, to sponsor people. FTX is also getting in front of the masses as well. And a lot of the market, you know, retail investors who are just learning about crypto or wanting to learn about crypto are the ones that are uh, attending these events, are attending sporting matches, they're attending Formula One. And that means that we are getting in front of those eyeballs. So FTX has partnered uh, with Mercedes, the Mercedes Formula One team, and they're also going to facilitate NFT collections for the fans as well. So you can buy NFTs for Mercedes Formula One team on their platform. Now, this is a very interesting one. So, The Economist has been very anti-Bitcoin for a very long time, and they've come out and they've 
been quoted saying Bitcoin is the Nobel Prize winning diversification strategy. So this is a really, really great article talking about how you, know, you should have at least some form of exposure to Bitcoin when the world is in such turmoil and there's, there's a lot of situations that are out of people's controls. I had a stat yesterday that in the 11 or so years, 12 years that Bitcoin has been around since 2009, coming up to 12 years, I should say, that it is up 33,000% from when you first invested in it if you bought as early as 2009. Now, I personally didn't. My first purchase was in 2013. And unfortunately, as the saying always goes, I didn't buy nearly enough. <laughs> All right, so let's jump into the next one. So JP Morgan is has announced that they're piling their investors into Ethereum and they're leaving Bitcoin behind. So one of the reasons why they're doing this is because Ethereum is moving further and further away from proof of work and closer to proof of stake. So it's becoming a limited supply cap coin and it's very utilitarian. So you can really utilize Ethereum, whereas Bitcoin is very much a store of value or a place to transact wealth. This is a great article. I'm not going to read or go through the whole thing, but it gives you a really deep insight from uh, Tyler Dunn from Zero Hedge about why the institutions or specifically JP Morgan are leaving Bitcoin and piling into Ethereum. And you can see since the EIP-1559 has launched, there has been $1.2 billion USD in Ethereum that has been burned or 404,000 Ethereum. So this is a huge, huge thing that's happening and it is giving a lot of confidence back to the Ethereum community. Uh, fees have gone down quite significantly. They're still very, very high and proof of stake will definitely fix that once and for all. But getting a proof of work blockchain that is being used and utilized or the second most utilized chain in the world to convert to proof of stake is a long and tedious process with a lot of checks and balances to, to make sure you've covered in the process. China bans Bitcoin. Go figure. It's September. Well, it's, it's not anymore. It's October now. But <laughs> China has banned Bitcoin. It's banned mining. It's banned trading. It's banned sending and receiving Bitcoin. Banks are banning it. And if you've been around, you've heard me talk about this before. If you've been around before, you know that it's nothing new for, for China to be banning crypto. Uh, it does seem like this, this time may be different because the digital yuan, the C, CBDC, is quite close or at least being tested by the Chinese government now. And you can also see with different exchanges like Huobi have come out and said by the 31st of December they won't be uh, allowing any mainland China users to be accessing their platform. A number of other platforms have said the same thing. So it looks like they could just be, those platforms could be just reacting to what the Chinese government is saying. But it does look like this time is going to be different and China is going to officially ban it. You also see that a huge amount of trading volume has moved to decentralized exchanges like DYDX and other decentralized exchanges. So yeah, could it be different? Absolutely. But Going back as far as 2013, I've looked at different articles where China's banned, banned uh, crypto. It's nothing new for them to ban it, and it's not really a big thing to be worried about. If anything, you should be worried about the Evergrande situation. The The price of coal is getting so expensive that China stopped buying it, and instead they're telling entire industrial cities to just stop using power, i.e. shut the doors, send everyone home, and stop creating products for the for the first world or for the western western civilization and this has caused you know, ripples across all of the financial systems apple tesla have stopped manufacturing to some degree in in china and paused a lot of their their uh, facilities and you know investors are seeing that and de definitely getting scared from it. so it's it's got quite the ripple effect of what's going on really from china right now bobby lee he's he's one that's very, very interesting. He's had some really, really clever and right predictions, but he's also had some very wrong ones. So I'm putting this here purely for context to give you guys some hopium, but at the same time, it's important to uh, take this with a grain of salt. So from December 8th, 2018, uh, he said from uh, from then all-time high of USD $1,200 in December 2013, for the next 30 months, Bitcoin went down by over 87% to bottom out at $150 in January 2015. 
So rock, rock bottom. So now uh, from December 17, 2017, high of $20,000, drawing down 87% would take it down to 2500 bucks. So maybe a bottom out in January 2019. So it didn't get down from twenty to 2500 It got down to about 3500 which is around 80 or so percent it retraced. So this gives you kind of context, looking at the past to try and predict the future. So yeah, this was a, tw a tweet from 2018, and he also tweeted in 2018, he retweeted this and said, if history repeats itself, then the current bear market for Bitcoin will bottom out at 2,500 bucks next month in January 2019. And then the next rally would start in late 2020, peak out in December of 2021 at $333,000 and then crash back down to around 41000 in January of 2023 or something like that. So the reason I, I brought this up and showed this to you is because it gives you a little bit of context. I don't think we're going to get to 333000 or even close to that. I know we're going to get, or I believe I should say, we are going to get over $100,000 Bitcoin in this cycle and it's probably going to happen before the end of this year. Because markets are cyclical and they follow the cycles. So what does this mean? We're potentially going to be over $100,000 and then it's going to crash back down around the 80% mark um, back down to, he's saying here 41000 from 333 I think we're going to probably see around the twenty dollars to $30,000 mark is where it's going to crash down to after we see a new all-time high. Now, again, to give you context, if... It's going to crash down to you know twenty to thirty thousand dollars, and have a, a really big run up from here. Would it be cheap to be buying Bitcoin at around the forty thousand dollar mark? Absolutely. Uh, but again, this is not a prediction of the future. I I cannot. I don't have a crystal ball. Uh, there's some people on the internet that think they do. All I can do is look at the past and and make an assessment of what could potentially happen in the future. Again, talking about turmoil and and things that are going on, on the macro side of things. The US government will run out of money by October 18th, the Treasury Secretary says. Now, this is pretty alarming for me because the US literally prints its own money and they can print their way to oblivion. So the fact that the US government's going to run out of money by October 18th, which is, you know, 18 days away, uh, less, than, less than three weeks, is a pretty scary thing to think about. <laughs> but as always... You know, the United States government is too big to fail. The United States is too big to fail. And I'm sure there will be printing that happens that pulls the United States out of this. Then we've got Tether. So there's been a lot of bad news about Tether over the years. There's been a lot of fear, uh, uncertainty and doubt. A lot of people saying that Tether is going to be the fall of crypto and blah, 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 blah. Well, the good news is that the New York court has dismissed half of the class action plaintiffs claims against Tether. They've literally thrown them out the door. And yeah, what what it looks like, the litigators will basically expose this case for what it what it is, a clumsy attempt at a money grab which recklessly harms the world, the whole cryptocurrency ecosystem. So I I see this as a, a very good bit of news and, and a good step forward. Now, does this mean to go all in on Tether, leave all your money in there? Probably not. Uh, always take your, your risk management seriously and uh, and just be using Tether as you need to rather than relying on it fully. And then finally, hometown Australia, we've got some, uh, some crazy, crazy headlines. So right now in Australia, everything is really scarce. So car parts are scarce, TVs are scarce, bikes are scarce, e everything that comes from another country, because Australia is essentially an island in the middle of the ocean, a uh, very big island that is, everything that we are receiving, or we are selling I should say, is kind of been put on hold or at least a couple of months away, uh, to the point where you know new car sales, you have to order cars and wait like 18 months now, there's just no stock anywhere. So... It's starting to get a little bit concerning seeing, you know, a lot of these these uh, headlines here, and it, and it all all like goes deeper into to other markets as well, like the property market. There's no stock, so houses are selling for ridiculous prices, absolute ridiculous prices. I think some of them are up thirty percent in a year, which is just mind blowing. So, um, there's a few headlines from Australia today. Uh, that that there's you know some some supply chain issues. There's some issues globally that we we're feeling, as well as I know I've talked to some of my friends in the United States, and uh, they've said that there's you know prices of property are going up more and more every day. 
clear issues going on globally. So a trophy shortage is coming, and it could last three years, importers warn. Um, less stock, higher prices. This is the reality confronting shoppers ahead of Christmas. Uh, why you could soon be paying more for tinned food, clothing, shoes, toys, computers, and more. And shipping costs surge uh, raises retail price pressures and inflation risks. And that's the other thing that's happening as well. Shipping's super slow here at the moment. So it took uh, around two weeks for me to get uh, a package I ordered from Melbourne to be sent to, to Sydney, which is like 900 kilometers or like you know, 500 miles away. And I, I sent a, a, a large package, like a pallet interstate, and it took like two weeks to get there as well. So shipping's very slow. There's a, there's a scarce amount of, of products globally. There's a scarce amount of products here. And the prices of stuff are going up. So... Uh, that's that's pretty much an update. You can see that there's a lot going on in the world. On the macro side of things, the the world is getting a little a little bit more scary. There's there's a lot going on there, and this is what uh, one of the reasons why I'm a really big believer in crypto and Bitcoin as a whole. Uh, I'm really really long on Bitcoin, although you know we've seen short term price movements. We're seeing you know bouncing within that range of the forty to fifty k mark. There's, there's a very, very high chance that we will see the peak of the market by the end of this year, the end of this quarter, you know, December 2021, uh, but it could it could go a little bit longer to you know, late, late March 2022, which is the end of first quarter. So that's it for this video. If you want to support the channel, go and download my Crypto Fast Start Guide by going to CryptoFastStartGuide.com. I'm also giving away $100,000 in crypto. Uh, all you have to do is go and watch this video and the previous seven videos and comment on that to be in the draw to win. Make sure you go and check out Max Wright's webinar. He's talking about a training where $10,000 invested wisely today can give you a passive income of $100,000 per year in just 18 months if you take this easy step today. So go and register for this webinar. There is a lot of great content in there. You're going to learn a lot as a bare minimum, and it's going to completely change your life as a maximum. The link is in the description for this webinar. It's also up here. If you have crypto and you want to earn up to 8%, use BlockFi. You can sign up using the link on the screen there or the link in the description. You can also borrow against your cryptocurrency rather than triggering capital gains events. I'm not a financial advice, I'm not a tax accountant, so I'm not actually giving you financial advice, but I'd definitely recommend speaking to someone who knows your situation. You can actually get $250 in crypto as a bonus when you transfer $100 or more into this wallet. And then finally, grab a crypto.com card and grab a crypto.com account. Uh, you can get a free $25 sign-up bonus by going to this link. And the beauty of this is you can transfer crypto to your card and be able to spend it real time in shops. So as always, support the channel uh, because the more I get support from these affiliate offers, the more I'm actually putting into this campaign in order to give away to you guys. So that's it from me. I really enjoyed making this video for you. If you really enjoyed this content and you like these short kind of punchy videos, make sure to leave a comment below and just give me some feedback there. Again, make sure to give the video a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.